In this video, we'll be looking at the mathematics of the casino game called Roulette. Now, a lot of people are familiar with Roulette, but we can just review all the rules, and then we'll go into the math and see why it's very disadvantageous to ever even play this game. Because in the long run, you'll be losing negative 5.3 cents. And we'll see this number come up over and over and over again as we do a few test cases. But first, let's just explain the basic rules. So the game is played very simply. You take this ball, you spin around this wheel, which is lined with 38 numbers, uh, which are the numbers 1 through 36, as well as 0 and double 0. But each number has an equal chance of being of the ball landing on it that is assuming everything is uh there's no glitches in the wheel or anything like that so there's no exploits you can do uh but the you can make different kind of bets and depending on the kind of bet you make the payoffs are different so the easiest kind of bet you make is on a single number so let's say i bet on the number 18 i think it's going to land on 18 for some reason so the ball rolls around 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 and miraculously it lands in the number 18 i've won if i bet one dollar on 18 then my payout is 35 to 1 which means i get 35 dollars back which is quite a lot but of course it's that high because the casino knows that's very unlikely and that's kind of how these bets work the more and more likely something becomes to happen the less and less of the payoff you'll get for example the lowest payout you can get is one to one which means you put down one dollar and if that event happens you'll get a dollar back and those include getting something like one through 18 which is called low numbers uh, notice something we'll notice later on one through 18 how many numbers are in here there are 18 numbers how many chances how many numbers are there total 38 so that 18 over 38 is a little bit under a half so we see that already this is in the casino's advantage because you're just getting a one one to one payout. We'll make this all concrete later on. Again, high numbers are one to one, even numbers are one to one, odd, black, red, all one to one. Uh, there's a few other kind of bets. A double means two adjacent numbers, so I could do 11 12 or 12 15, and that would be a seven to one payout. Uh, a row is one of these rows, so one, two, three, or 13 14 15. That row will pay out 11 to 1. A corner is four numbers, such as 8, 9, 11, 12, uh, that are touching, so in a corner. And the corner payout will be 8 to 1. We'll see that later on. A double row is just a two rows. Uh, a column is just one of these three columns, not including the zero or double zero here. And a dozen is just a th three rows. So, uh, sorry, four rows. So it's going to be 1 through 12, 13 through 24, or 25 through 36. And that's a dozen. And that's 2 to 1. So we see this is kind of the order it goes. And that's basically the basic rules. Now, let's see if you should play this game. Let's do a, tr a few different test cases to see if we can find some winning strategy or something like that. So we're going to go to this page. We're going to try three different strategies just to see what kind of things we get by doing these things. So the first one we're going to try is first column. So what that means is we're going to bet a dollar. So we'll just do a dollar to keep things simple for now. We're going to bet a dollar on the first column. That is the numbers 1 through 34, just this whole first column right here. So that includes 12 numbers. So if we just do the expected winnings, so we're betting a dollar, right? So what's the expected winnings we're going to get? So there's a few different things that can happen. We could win, in which case we would get, uh, and what are the odds for columns? So if we look at this chart right here, we see the column odds are 2 to 1. So we're going to get $2 back. So we could win $2, and what are the odds of doing that? Well, there's 12 numbers in a column, 38 numbers total. So that's our chance of getting $2. Now, the other more likely thing is that we just lose the dollar we bet. And what's the chance of doing that? Well, it's the rest of the probability. So it's going to be 26 over 38. So this is a very basic calculation. So on top, we have 24 minus 26. So we have negative 2 over 38, also known as negative 1 over 19. And if we do that with a calculator and we figure out what it is, that's approximately negative 5.3 cents. So here's the first instance of that negative 5.3 cents coming up. And let's explain what this means. That means if you use this as a betting strategy and you do this over and over and over again, keep betting a dollar on the first column, in the long run, on every single every single time you play this game, you're expecting to lose negative 5.3 cents. So you're expecting to lose money, even though it's a little bit. So you should not use this strategy if you're, if you're trying to make money. Okay, that's fine. Let's try a different strategy. Let's say you try a more complicated strategy. You put two different bets. So we're going to put 50 cents, half a dollar, on a corner, and we're going to put 50 cents on the third column. Let's explain what that means and read the table to figure out what are the payouts. So, for example, we're just going to choose a corner. Let's say we choose the corner 1, 2, 4, 5. So the one that's in green right here. And we're going to we're going to put 50 cents on that corner. And we're going to put 50 other cents on this entire third column. So we see that there's no overlap in the bets we're doing right now. So the expected value calculation is a little more involved. But it's still pretty simple. So what are our expected winnings now? 
Now, there's three things that can happen. The first thing that can happen is we win our corner bet. So that means one of those uh, numbers in the four uh, in the corner that we picked gets landed on by the wheel by, by the uh, ball. So and what's what's the probability of this? The probability of this is there's four numbers and there's 38 total numbers. That's the probability. Now we bet 50 cents or half a dollar. How much are we expecting to win? So a corner is eight to one. So we'll be getting eight times 50 cents or four dollars back if we win this. But there's something to keep in mind. Even though we'll win four dollars, we'll have lost the other 50 cent bet because that column will not have come up. So we have to subtract half a dollar. So you got to keep these nuances in mind when you're doing these calculations. Now the other case is, of course, the column could uh, come up. So again, the column probability is 12 over 38. So we have 12 over 38. And what are the payouts? We remember the payout was double. So it's going to be getting one dollar since we only bet 50 cents this time. But again, we lose the 50 cents we bet on the corner because that didn't come up uh, because the column came up. So the last case, which is that we don't get either of them, that we land on something completely different. And what's the probability of this? So these probabilities add up to 16 over 38, which leaves what? That leaves uh, 22. So we have plus 22 over 38. And what's the payout here? Well, the payout here is we just lose the $1. Now, if we go ahead and we calculate this, this comes out to negative 2 over 38, or negative 1 over 19, again. And as we saw from up here, that is about negative 5.3 cents. So that number has come up again. So that means even using this more complicated strategy, putting our bets in two different places, kind of like splitting our bets up, which people think sometimes is advantageous, we're still, every single round we play with this strategy, we're expecting to lose uh, 5.3 cents. So again, we should not use this strategy if we're trying to make money uh, in the long run. Now we're going to try a even more complicated strategy and something that's been even written in a book. So the original author of the James Bond books suggested this James Bond strategy and it involves three putting your bets in three different places rather than just two or rather than just one. And we're going to just just to kind of make concrete what we're doing. We're not going to have $1 this time. We're going to start with $200. We're going to take $200 and we are going to put it in three different places. So we're going to put $140 in one place. We're going to put $50 in another place and ten dollars in another place and i'll explain now where each of those places is so we're going to put 140 dollars on the high numbers that is numbers 19 through 36. we're going to put 50 dollars on 13 through 18 in the form of a double row and we're going to put ten dollars on the number zero and that that's where they're all going and now we can just calculate the expected value using the same kind of strategies we've been doing up here so just going to be a little more involved not really a big deal so what are our expected winnings now there's three different things that could happen. Uh, so we can, let's say this $140 bet pays off. So that means the high numbers come up. So how many of these are there? There's 18. And how many are there total? There's 38 numbers. So as we noted in the beginning, this is slightly under a half. And those odds are just one to one. So that means we're gaining $140. But then we're losing the 50 and the 10 because by default, these wouldn't have come up if this came up, right? Because they're all, none of these are, uh, in, there's no overlap between all these bets here. So we're losing $60 total. That's one thing that can happen. Another thing that can happen is if this comes up, this 13 through 18, and how many numbers is that? That's six in the form of double row, right? So the six numbers. So we could be getting plus six over 38. And a double row payout, let's refer to our chart here. A double row is five to one. So we're getting 5 times 50, or $250. But by default, again, we're losing this 150 that's contained in the 140 and the 10. So minus 150. Now there's just two more cases. The next case is this very unlikely case that this 0 comes up, uh, which is a 1 over 38 chance. But if it does happen, that's 35 to 1 odds. So we're getting $350. But we're losing this $190 from here. And the last case would be that none of these events happen. So what's the total probability here? It's 18 and 6. That means 24. This is 25. So that leaves uh, 13. So we have plus 13 over 38. That's the chance that nothing comes up. That means we lose the whole $200. And this, uh, in the end, comes out to negative $10.5. So remember, we're not getting the negative 5.3 cents, but that's only because we bet so much more. In these first two bets, we bet $1 total. In this one, we bet all $1 on the first column. This, we split up our bets. Here, we're betting $200. So really, if we want to find the uh, amount of winnings per dollar that we're going to get, we should divide this negative 10.5 by 200. And when we do that, we end up with, you guessed it, this negative 5.3.
sense. So that means even using this complicated, more complicated strategy called the James Bond strategy, we are going to, on average, every time we play the strategy, every round we play it, we're going to be losing negative 5.3 cents. So every single one of these, we're losing negative 5.3 cents. And you can prove that playing roulette, playing this game we just described, every single time you play it, there's no, you cannot do better than losing negative 5.3 cents on average per round. It's just, that's the way the casino made it so that the uh, house could have the advantage at all times. Now, it, it seems pretty hopeless there, but there is a theoretical gambling strategy we haven't talked about yet and which we'll talk about right now. Now, we say theoretical because it's not really applicable in the real world, but if it were, if you had an infinite amount of money, then you would be guaranteed to always win exactly $1 playing with this strategy. Um, and let's explain it right now. It's very simple the way you play it, and you'll, you'll see why you always win $1. So this is called a martingale. So how you play is very simple. You're going to start with a $1 bet playing roulette. Now you have a $1 bet. Now, two things can happen. You can either win or lose. So let's say you can either win or lose. If you win, you immediately leave the casino. And let's say you're just doing a one-to-one -one bet, right? So uh, if you win, you're going to win a dollar. So you'll take your dollar and you'll leave the casino. So we'll, we'll, just, we'll depict leaving by just this. You just draw a little house for go home take your dollar home. So if you win, you just go straight home with your dollar. You won a dollar. Now let's say you lose. You lost your dollar. What you do now is you bet two dollars. Okay, so we're assuming you have an infinite amount of money, uh, or not infinite, you have a very, very, very large amount of money, so this money is no issue right now. So you bet two dollars. Again, you can either win or you can lose. Now let's say what's the event that you win. So what, what's happened so far? You've bet a dollar, you've lost it. So you're negative, you currently have a balance, a winning balance of negative one dollars. Now you bet two dollars and you win. So you get those two, you get two dollars. So right now you have a winnings of one dollar. So you're in, you've won from the casino so far. Now you've won. So you just take your one dollar and you go home. Now what's more likely is that you're going to lose again. Now if you lose, you double your bet. So you bet four dollars. I'll try to drift towards this side so we have space. Uh, $4. Now, either you win or you lose. Now, if you win, again, we're going to do a simple calculation. So if you've been, if you've gotten to this stage, what's happened? You bet a dollar, you lost it. So you have negative one. You bet $2, you lost those $2. You won your $4, though. So you're going to get plus four. Four minus two minus one is plus one. So you take your $1 of winnings and you go home. And if you lose, you bet $8. And that just keeps happening. So at each point, you only have two options. Either you win or lose. And if you win, you just go straight home. If you lose, you double your bet. So we, we see that playing the strategy, if you're able to double your bet every single time, then as soon as you win, you're going to recuperate all of your losses plus a dollar. So that means using the Smartingale strategy. And if you have a very, 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 very large amount of money, and money is not really an issue, then you will always leave the casino with $1. Now, you can probably already see the problems with this. There's two two major problems. The first is that it could take a long time before you win uh, a round. And that could involve, since you're doubling your bet every time, this is this is, this is uh, getting bigger and bigger and bigger at a very, very, very fast rate. So you might not have enough money to cover the next bet, and you might run out of money before you're even able to win and cover all your previous losses. The second thing is, even if you are very, very, very wealthy, which is kind of required for this game, if you're very wealthy and you're guaranteed that the strategy will get you $1 in the end, is there really a point to play just to win your $1? You know, it's, it doesn't really seem worth it to spend all that time at the casino to be guaranteed $1, no more, no less of a payout. So that's why the Martingale, although a great theoretical strategy for always winning a dollar and definitely better than um, our, our strategies outlined here where you're losing money every single time, it's not really practical. So so the, the moral of this game is roulette might be fun, but really it should be called the game of losing 5.3 cents because that's what's happening. So until next time.